Dear friends, welcome to the video content on statistics. In this tutorial, we will cover data collection, data presentation, graphical representation, measures of central tendency. Data collection. Data used for statistics is of two types. Primary data is the data collected with a definite objective in mind. This is most reliable as it is collected by the person himself with a clear intention of getting the correct data. However, secondary data is the data collected from external sources for some other purpose. Hence, it may not be reliable or it may be unfit for current observations. Lot of care has to be taken before deciding to choose such data for statistical purposes. Data Presentation once we get the data, we need to organize the data in a way so that it can be analyzed. If the data is presented as it is, without any processing, it is called raw data. It is difficult to analyze the data in such a form without processing it to a better form. If the data is small enough, it can be arranged in ascending or descending order of its values to quickly get the minimum and maximum values in the data. This is called sorted data. When data is large but spread across a small range, we can find the number of times each value occurs in the data and write the results in a tabular form. This is called ungrouped frequency distribution. However, if the range is large and contains many unique values, the frequency distribution table would become very long. In such cases, the range is divided into multiple smaller intervals and the number of values in each such interval is listed against the interval. This is called group frequency distribution table. The size of such a table depends on the size of the intervals. Taking larger intervals reduces the size of the table and taking smaller intervals increases the size of the table. Graphical representation there are different methods of graphically representing the data obtained so that other people can analyze the data themselves. If we have categorical data which is not grouped by intervals, we can use bar graphs. In bar graphs, the order of the bars is not important. Since the categories do not have any sequence, bars can be placed in any order. If the data is grouped into continuous intervals in a range, we need histogram to represent the data in the form of intervals. Unlike bar graphs, the order of bars in histogram is important because the whole histogram consists of a continuous range. In a histogram, the area of each bar represents the relative proportion of values belonging to that particular interval as compared to other intervals. If we try to change the order of the bars, the graph may give a false impression of the data being interpreted. Hence, we should always use histogram instead of bar graphs for such a data. Sometimes the data is too large to be represented clearly by just using a histogram. This may be due to small intervals or very large range. In such cases, we use frequency polygon which is just an extension to the histogram. To draw a frequency polygon, we use class marks of every interval and plot the corresponding frequencies. These points are then joined to form a frequency polygon. In case there is no interval on either side which has zero frequency, then extra interval is added with zero frequency to complete the polygon. If the intervals chosen are uniform, then the area of the frequency polygon and that of corresponding histogram is same. Frequency polygon is easier to interpret than histogram for large data since it contains only one continuous line across the range. Frequency polygon can also be drawn without drawing the histogram and in such cases it can also be used to represent multiple frequency polygons in the same graph. Measures of central tendency when we get statistics about something, we get many values which are spread over a range. Sometimes it is desirable to be able to describe the data using just one value. It is easier to find out the smallest and largest value in the data, but if we need to find out the central value, there are various ways 
which are called measures of central tendency. Mean is the average of all the values in the data obtained by dividing the sum of all the values by the total number of values. Median is the value that divides the data into two equal parts. One part would contain all the values larger than the median, other will contain all the values smaller than the median. It is either the middle value or the mean of two middle values. Mode. Mode is the value which occurs maximum number of times in the data. Test yourselves. The following are a few questions for you. Please revise the concept on your own. This content was developed under Akash School Project. This project is funded by NMEICT and MHRD Government of India. If you wish to contact us, please email us at the given email ID. Thank you for watching this content.